All right, guys, we're going to talk today. 8.4 is a section called the binomial theorem. Okay, binomial means two terms. You guys have seen this before. We talked about this in Algebra 2. Um, if you don't remember it, that's okay. We're going to talk about finding the binomial coefficients. It's just a formula. It's really easy to do. And then we're going to talk about expanding binomials using Pascal's triangle. So when I talk about binomial coefficients, right, this is the formula that you're going to use. You're finding the sum of all the coefficients if I expanded this binomial out as far as it can go. We'll talk about expanding in a minute, but I just want you guys to understand that this formula is what you're going to be using. And I'll explain a little bit more why a little bit later, but you're going to see problems written two ways. You're going to see it written this way, and you're going to see it written this way. What do you notice next to the C and then in the parentheses? What do you guys notice about the N and the R? Which one comes first? The N. The N. Alphabetically, which one comes first, N or R? The N. the N, okay? So just think about that, guys. When you're trying to determine what do I use for N, what do I use for R, the first number you see is the N, the second number you see is the R, all right? Questions would look like this. I suggest you put this right next to all the problems that say find the binomial coefficients. If we're going to do letter A, it says 8 and then the big C and then the 2. So in my formula... If you want to say this is N and this is R to kind of keep yourself straight, that's a good idea. So in my numerator, I would have 8 factorial. Remind me again what 8 factorial means. What does 8 factorial mean? Correct. 8 times 7 times, yes, correct. And then on the bottom, I have N minus R. So N, so be 8 minus 2 factorial. And then I have two factorial. This is you guys showing me your work. I need to see one more step that you understand what you're doing here. I have eight factorial, and then what's eight minus two? So it's six factorial times two factorial. Can I multiply the six and the two together and get 12? No. no. All right. This stays, and I'm going to write 8 times 7 times, and I'm going to stop right here on the top with 6 factorial. Why did I stop with 6 factorial on the top? Because, you just talked about the because I have a 6 factorial on the bottom. Good, Madison. And I have 2 times 1. So now we just simplify. 6 factorial on the bottom crosses off with 6 on the top. 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 8 how many times? 4, right? What's 4 times 7? Thank you. That was kind of scary for a second. 4 times 7 is 28. That's it. That's exactly how you do these problems. Let's look at B. All right. B is written with 10 on top of 3. Well, again, remind yourself the first number is N. The second number is R. So I have my formula. It's N factorial. So it's 10 factorial over what? 10 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. So simplify a little bit. You have 10 factorial over, what's 10 minus 3? Seven. 7 factorial times 3 factorial. Now we're just going to write out and simplify. So I'm going to, on top, I'm going to say 10 times 9 times 8 times, I'm going to stop at 7 because I have a 7 factorial on the bottom. And then I have 3 times 2 times 1. So my 7 factorials cancel out. All right, 3 goes into 3 how many times? Once. 3 goes into 9 three times. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 8 four times. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So what's 10 times 3 times 4? Perfect. 120. Does anyone have any questions? Kennedy, your hat's really cute. Thank you. All right, what's the next one say? C. Let's look at C. It's 7 and 0. So N is my 7. R is my 0. So it's N factorial, right? 7 factorial over what? How do I write this? 7 factorial over 7 minus 0 factorial and then 0 factorial, right? Agreed? Okay, so on the, uh, as I simplify, I have 7 factorial, whoops, over 7 factorial, 0 factorial. Well, what do you guys notice? You can just cross out. Yeah, 7's cross out. What am I left with on top? 
1. This is 1 over 0 factorial. Is this 1 over 0? No. What does 0 factorial equal? 1. So 1 over 1 is 1. Remember, 0 factorial is the number 1. It's not 0. Don't get that confused. And then what's the last one? 8 over 8? So D is 8 and 8. My N and my R. So I have 8 factorial over 8 minus 8 factorial times what? What's the R? Eight. Okay. So I have 8 factorial over, what's 8 minus 8? So 0 factorial times 8 factorial. Guys, am I multiplying 0 times 8 in the denominator? Mm -hmm. No, 0 factorial equals 1. What happens with 8 factorial on the top and 8 factorial on the bottom? Yes. They cancel out, so what's my answer here? 1, okay. Questions at home, how is that? We okay? Yes. Okay, this is pretty basic, pretty easy. If I, let's run through these pretty quickly. For letter A, I have, whoops, this should be R, not 7. I have 7 factorial over 7 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial, correct? So 7 factorial over 7 minus 3 is 4. And then I have 3. Guys, you do not multiply that together. We do not get 4 times 3 is 12. It's not the way that that works. So in the numerator, I have 7 times 6 times 5 times, I'm going to stop at 4. Why am I stopping at 4? Because there's a 4 factorial on the bottom. Whoops. So then I have 3 times 2 times 1. My 4s cancel out. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 6 twice. Anything else? No. So 7 times 2 times 5. Or I can do what with the 2s? Right? There's one on top, one on the bottom. Either way, it doesn't matter. You can just multiply across on the top and then divide at the end. It doesn't matter. But 7 times 5 is 35. Say it again. Because 3 was here. So 3 went into 3 one time and 3 went into 6 two times. And then there was a 2 here, so I just crossed that 2 out with this 2. You can, guys, if you'd rather just multiply everything across and then divide, that's totally fine too. You're just always going to leave it as a fraction. All right, pick one more. I'm not going to do all these. Pick one more. B, C, or D? D. D. All right, D says, this is not, this is N, this is R. So I have 12 factorial over 12 minus 11 factorial, right? Over 11 factorial. Adrian picked this one because he's like, whoa, it's got the biggest numbers. It's actually the easiest one to do. So I have 12 factorial over, what's 12 minus 11? One. So 1 factorial times 11 factorial. Well, what's 1 factorial? Okay, so I can just cross that out. So I have 12 times 11. Can I stop at 11? Yeah. Because there's 11 factorial on the bottom? So what happens with my 11s? Cross them out. 11 factorial crosses out, and I'm left with just yeah. 12. Good. If you wanted to write out 12 times 11 times 10 times I da 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 multiply it all out, get a huge number in your calculator. That is fine. If that makes you guys feel better, then do that. All right, next, I'm going to write down some stuff here. I want you guys to write it down with me. So I tried to write it down this morning, and I got sidetracked. So just write this down with me. Either take a picture of this, guys, or write this down. But I'm going to go through each step with you. I know this seems like, oh, my gosh, what? This is really super easy, I promise. Are we taking pictures? Okay, let me take a picture. You have to be organized when we do this. You've got to be organized. But other than that, you guys should be you should be okay with this. The first thing I'm I'm gonna we're gonna talk about, you're gonna determine what row of Pascal's triangle that you're gonna use. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. And then the second thing you're gonna do is write out the first term under each pattern number. Again, I'll tell you that in a second. Then you're gonna write out the second term underneath the first term. You're going to write exponents of the first term in descending order. What does that mean, descending? Down. Goes down, good. Then you're going to write the exponents in the second term in ascending order. What does that mean? Then you're going to simplify the powers and multiply down. 
so here is Pascal's triangle, right here. All right, let's, I'm gonna take a picture. Okay, here's Pascal's triangle. When you, you guys should put this next to everything, every problem that you to, do to expand, okay? When we're talking about Pascal's triangle, this is considered the zero row. It's gonna let me write here. This no. right here is the zero. This is the first row, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna determine what row you're looking at. That is based upon the exponent right here. When it says to write the expansion of the expression x plus one to the third power, do you guys agree with me that x plus one to the third power just means x plus one times x plus one times x plus one, correct? Could we all figure this out? You'd foil these two together combine like terms, then you'd multiply by this one, combine like terms. All right, that's a good way to check yourself, but when you start to expand to like the fifth and sixth power, where you have to multiply the same binomial by itself five and six times, you use Pascal's triangle because all it is is just a pattern. All of the questions on your test on Friday are going to say expand using Pascal's triangle. That means you can check yourself by multiplying together the binomials however many times it says, but you have to use the pattern. So this is the way that you do it. First thing you do is you look at the exponent. That determines the row. So I'm talking about row three. Do you guys notice that the coefficients of row three are right here? Does everybody see that? The pattern is one, three, three, one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down one, whoops. I'm gonna write down one, three, three, one. This is visually different than you were taught last year. I think this is a little easier. All right, now we talked, I just talked to you about the first, first term and the second term. In this binomial, guys, what is the first term? No, the first term you see, x. So I'm gonna write down the first term, x, 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 x. What's the second term? One, 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 one. So you write the row of Pascal's triangle, that's based upon the exponent. Then you simply write down the first term under every single number in that row. Then you write down the second term under every single number. Now, the next part is just what we're gonna practice, okay? It says in the green, you're gonna write the exponents on the first term in descending order. Well, what exponent am I gonna start with? What, exp what, what row do we start with? What are we raising this binomial to? Three. three. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna say three, two, one, zero. You should always end with a zero. And when I write a zero as an exponent, what does that equal? Anything to the zero power? One. So I'm just gonna cross this out and put a one. Then the, sec the, the row underneath that, it says we write our exponents how? No, that was descending. Now what do we do? Ascending. Ascending. So I'm going to start with zero. One, two, three. This one to the zero power, I can cross it off and make it a what? A one. A one. Now at this point, you should, I told you guys, simplify powers. Well, one to the first power, one to the second power, one to the third power. They're all what? One. So all we do here, guys, is multiply down x is a variable, so I'm gonna multiply the numbers. What's one times one? Two. No, one times one. One times, one. One, times one. one times x to the third is x to the third. What is three times one? Three. Times x to the second, three x squared. What's three times one squared? Three. Times x to the first is x. What's one times one cubed? times one, and you've just now expanded. You've just now multiplied x plus one times x plus one times x plus one. You don't have to foil, you don't have to combine like terms, nothing like that. Notice that all of my terms are positive, yes? If the sign here is a plus, that means everything is positive. It's a, if it's a minus, it's gonna alternate, plus minus, plus minus. But if you follow, if you use Pascal's triangle, you just, all you have to do is figure out the row. That's all you have to do 
with Pascal's triangle is figure out the row. Then everything else is just basic multiplication and addition. Let's look at the next one. All right, some of these get a little bigger. X minus 1, that's not really hard. But let's do this one. Third power. I'm not even going to look at Pascal's triangle. What row is the third power? 1, 3, one, three, three 1. What is the first term you guys see in this binomial? So I'm going to write X under every single number. What's the second term you see? So look, I'm going to always put my negatives in parentheses. So I visually see, ooh, that's a negative. I need to remember that. So think about our exponents. We start with 3 in that second row. I'm going to start with 3, and I write them how? Descending. So 3, 2, 1, 0. I'm going to cross that out make it a 1. That last row, I start with what? 0. zero. So I'm going to cross that out and make it a 1. And then I have 1, 2, 3. Now we, in this instance, I would simplify the powers. What is negative 1 to the first power? No. Negative 1, okay? What's negative 1 to the second power? Positive 1. What's negative 1 to the third power? Negative 1. Now it's real easy to multiply down. What's 1 times 1? Times x to the third? x cubed. What's 3 times negative 1? So it's negative 3x squared. What's 3 times 1? positive 3x, and then what's 1 times negative 1 times 1? Yep. So do you guys see how since this was a minus sign in the middle here, then your signs and your answer alternate? Questions? Yep. First thing I'm going to do is I need to have Pascal's triangle because I don't have this memorized. Okay, so Madison tells me I'm going to put it up here. It's to the fourth power, guys, right? Are we raised to the fourth power here? Yeah. Okay. So the, the fourth row is right here. So what am I writing out? One, four, six, four, one. I like to give myself lots of room. All right. The first term that you guys see is what? 2x. Write it together and put it in parentheses. You'll see why. If you want to put everything in parentheses, put everything in parentheses. 2x is my first term. What is the second term you see? So I'm going to put that in parentheses as well. So the only thinking we've really had to do is to actually look at Pascal's triangle and say, okay, what's the pattern that I have to write out? What's the row I'm looking at? Now let's do our exponents. This is raised to the fourth power, so I'm going to start with four here, and then I go what? Mm -hmm. Yep, three, two, one, zero. I can always, on this last one, I can always cross it out and make it what number? One. A one. Good. Now on the bottom row, I start with what number? Zero. zero. I can cross that out and make it a one, and then I have one, two, three, four. If you notice, on the left-hand side, you start with 4. On the right-hand side, you end with 4. Whatever you start with, you should end with on the bottom. Now, this, I think, is the most important step. I think you should simplify powers here. And what I mean by that, guys, remember, this 4 goes to the 2 and to the x, right? So what's 2 to the 4th power? So this is really 16x to the 4th. Agreed? Okay, so this 3 goes to the 2 and to the x. So this is really what? 8x cubed. This 2 goes to the 2 and to the x. So it's really what? 4x squared. This 1 goes to both, so I'm just going to write 2x. And then that 1 is there. I'm going to simplify the bottom row, too, just so I don't make a silly mistake. Some of you will go, oh, negative 3 times 2, that's 6. That's not what that says. This says negative 3 to the third power, to the first power, I'm sorry, it's negative 3. This says negative 3 squared, which is what? Positive 9. This says negative 3 cubed, which is negative 27, good. And what's negative 3 to the fourth power? positive 81. 
Now you take your calculator and you multiply. Remember, the x, your variable, is just the quote unquote last name. So this is just 1 times 16 times 1. It's 16x to the fourth. Now I have 4 times 8 times negative 3. What's 4 times 8 times negative 3? Negative 96. Yep, negative 96. And then I have x to the third, right? So I have now 6 times 4 times 9. What's 6 times 4 times 9? 108? Six times four times nine. Six times four times nine. Yeah, I don't know why I got 108. Thank you. 216 x squared. Now four times two times negative 27. What? Did you get negative 216? I did. And then one times one times 81. So plus 81. There you have expanded this binomial. If you were to say 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3, you would get the same thing. It would take you a heck of a lot longer and I guarantee you somebody would make some mistakes somewhere because there's a lot going on in that problem. So we're going to give you problems and we're going to raise it to the seventh power or something like that. You guys are going to have to use Pascal's triangle and evaluate. It's nothing you can't handle. It's just a little, it can be a little confusing if you're not organized. Let's do this last one together. Can I just a question? Yep. Okay, so like the highest you can go is like the seven, right? To get to the triangle? Well, it goes bigger, but we're probably not going to go any bigger than that. Okay. Just because you guys don't have an hour and a half to work out a problem. Right? Let me try and be even a little more organized with this one for you. Okay, I have x minus 2y to the fifth power. So first of all, tell me what row is, the, what am I writing out for my row? One, five, ten. One, five, ten, 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 five, and one. All right, this is a long one. It's okay. What is the first term you guys see? Okay, so just write out x. That's easy. We don't have to do anything. We don't have any parentheses we have to worry about. That's good. What is your second term, guys? Negative. negative. Good. I'm glad you said that. It's negative 2y. <laughs> now I tried to leave some extra room here. Exponents. What row did we start off with? What power? Fifth power, right? So I start with five. I say five, four, three, two, one, zero. You should always end with zero. That last row is going to start with what? Zero. And I should end with what? Five. Yep. Now, different colors may help you guys. Um, you know, I'm, the way that I'm going to write this might help you guys a little bit. Now, in that first row of x's, we'll say this is the second row, is there any powers that I have to worry about simplifying? No. So I'm good. So this right here, this negative 2y to the 0 was just 1. Negative 2y to the first power, you guys agree with me, is negative 2y, correct? See where I got that? Maybe it's easier if we write it underneath. Now this 2, it distributes to the negative 2 and to the y. So what's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 squared is 4, so I have y squared. This 3 goes to the negative 2 and to the y. So what's negative 2 to the third power? Perfect. Negative 8, and then I have y cubed. This 4 goes to the negative 2 and to the y. So what's negative 2 to the fourth power? positive 16 y to the fourth again guys use your calculators who cares what's negative 2 to the fifth power negative 32 y to the fifth remember if you have an odd exponent your answer is going to be odd I mean uh, negative 
Maybe it's easier, the, the last problem I did, I wrote the numbers to the side. Maybe it's easier if I write it underneath. But now we just multiply down. What do we do with the x, with the, uh, x and y? We just stick them together. So I have one, I use a different color. Um, this one. I have one times one times x to the fifth. Just gives me x to the fifth. So here I have five times negative two. What is that? Negative 10, and then I have x to the fourth, and then y. It's easier to write the x's first and the y's second. If you write them flip-flopped, okay, but just make sure your exponents are correct. So the next one I have 10 times 4, which is what? So plus 40, and then I have x to the third, y squared. Then I have 10 times negative 8, which is what? negative 80 and then what are my last names we'll call them I have x squared y to the third 5 times 16 positive 80 x to the first power y to the fourth and then I have 1 times 1 times negative 32 negative 32 y to the fifth and you have just expanded that binomial I would be hard pressed for you guys to write this out five times. And then one more. And then foil all of that out, distribute, combine like terms, everything, and get this same answer. This is a lot cleaner. It's a lot simpler. You just have to follow the rules. The rules, the first thing you do is say, okay, this binomial is raised to this power, so that's the row I'm gonna use. That's the, the pattern. Then you write the first term underneath every number. Then you write the second term underneath every number. And then you write the exponents for the first term in descending order, ending with zero. For the second term, you write them in ascending order, beginning with zero. And then you just simplify. So tonight for your homework,